That can't be good. On the last step, we used some piston ring pliers. These are optional for the job. On this next step where we're installing the pistons, you're going to need a ring compressor, and this is not an optional tool. You have to have this if you're going to prevent yourself from breaking your rings as you're installing the pistons. I also recommend you have a couple of vacuum caps. You can also use just like some 3 8 fuel hose, something like that. Basically, as we install, we want to protect the crank from getting marred by these rod bolts. So I'll just put something like that on them to protect it. That way, as it goes down in, if it hits the crank journal, it's not going to ha cause any damage. We also need some motor oil uh, to lubricate these as we go in. I've seen people, you know, have like a pan of oil and they dip the whole piston in and make a huge mess. You don't need that much oil. You're just trying to lubricate this so that it can slide out of the ring compressor and into the cylinder as you're installing them. You also are going to need something like uh, a hammer or a wood block, something to, to knock it in. I'll show you. Uh, I, I usually use just a handle, a wooden handle of a hammer uh, and hold on to the head as I drive it in. So let's take a look how this works. So I'm going to start on the number one cylinder here. This is the front of the engine. So we're going to start on the number one cylinder. It doesn't really matter where you start. You just have to make sure that you're putting them in, uh, putting the pistons in correctly. These pistons actually have an arrow that points forward. It points toward the front of the motor. Sometimes there will be a notch uh, on the skirt, on the top of the piston, basically on this here, so it won't have an arrow. It'll just be notched here, and there won't be anything there. So there's always some indicator that points toward the front of the motor. You also need to make sure that the connecting rods uh, are facing the, the right direction. So like the main caps, we have these alignment notches on the caps, right? So those go together. You can see here there's a groove, and this is for oil to spray out. That oil spray needs to go toward the inside of the motor. So in this case, it needs to be on this side. So this has to go in either 1, 3, 5, or 7. If we put it in the other side, we'd have to rotate it around, and then the piston's facing backwards. I've seen uh, some people advocate putting them in backwards. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with doing that, especially when they are uh, a little bit old and tired. The piston itself, this wrist pin is not dead center. It's offset just a little bit. So offsetting it, putting them in backwards might give you a little bit of piston slap. Some people think it gives you more uh, power. I, it may well do that. I've never seen anything that actually tested it out to, to prove it, so I'm just going to install these the way they're supposed to be. Okay, so first step is, as we're putting this down in, if you take a look, this is going to come down in, and these rings are not going to want to go past this edge. You have to squeeze them down into these ring grooves. There's no way you can do it by hand. And if they're not squeezed all the way in, when you try to push it down in, you'll break one of the rings. That's why you need a ring compressor for this. The ring compressor is just basically a band. They're, they're usually very similar in style. This one kind of has a little ratchet mechanism on it that I can open up. And so it's got a thing that I can tighten it. I can open this up. So we get it larger than the piston and the rings. So that we can slide it down over the top of them. Just like that. You notice that this is offset. We've got more flap here and less here. This we want down because we want it to tighten. It's 
close to the bottom of the piston where it goes into the cylinder as possible. Now, before we put this on and tighten it, we want to lubricate it. We want to lubricate it liberally, give it some pretty good amount of oil, because we want it to be able to slip through the ring compressor. So I'm going to lubricate all these ring grooves. While we're in here, I'm going to clock these ring openings. Top ring, I'm going to point toward this skirt. Doesn't matter which direction you point them, they just need to not be lined up. And as long as you do it the same way every time, it just helps you to remember. I'm going to point this one at this skirt. And the ring two, I'm going to point at the other skirt. So you can see ring two is over here. Top ring is over here, just to make sure that they're not clocked to the same way. And you take your ring compressor, put it on here. It's a little easier to do this on the bench, but I'm trying to get it where we can see it with the camera. And I'm just going to take this ring compressor, and tighten it down. You want it to be pretty even. Now I'm going to slide it up so that it's closer to the top of the piston. I want the rings to be fully inside, but I want the skirt to be sticking out so that I can align it. Now before we slide it in, we want to make sure we're not going to be running into that journal. I don't really like where it's positioned right now. So I'm just going to slide the harmonic balancer onto the front. And rotate that guy so that it's all the way away from me and down a little bit because gravity is going to want to pull that connecting rod down. Make sure we're clean in here. Install a bearing half. coating on there. Put our pieces of hose or vacuum caps onto these threads to protect that journal. Verify once again toward the front. That skirt is going to slide right down in there. Now when we have it here it's not obvious which way is forward, so you can kind of align it, make sure that she's pointing, you know, not crooked like this, but get her straight and take the wrench and tighten that guy down again. And then I'm just going to take this rubber mallet here. And I'm going to use it like this. I'm going to use the back end so I don't damage this piston. I'm going to put it on there. And then I'm going to tap it in. And there we go. goes in real easy when you've got the right tool. If you're going back into an engine that hasn't had machine work, so there might be a little bit of a ridge up here, Make sure that you get it all the way in so that your rings are below that at this point. Now we're going to pull our caps off, our vacuum caps. It's going to be easier to do the measurement if this journal is all the way at the top. Clean off a spot. We want it clean and dry so that we can measure it with some plastic gauge. And we're going to use some green plastic gauge to measure it. If you want to see a little bit more in depth on how this stuff works, go ahead and take a look at the video where we put the main caps in. But really, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little piece of it here, 
put it on the journal. We'll take the cap that mates with this guy, put in, make sure you clean this off, get it nice and clean. And we're going to take this bearing half, put it in here, and then dry. We're going to install it. This tab needs to match the alignment tab. They both face the same way. So we're going to put this on here. Now we're going to torque this to spec and then take the cap back off and take a look at that piece of plastic gauge and see what our bearing clearance is. And then we'll torque them to 75 foot pounds. That can't be good. All right, so I have a confession to make. This may shock you, but sometimes I'm wrong. No, no, really, really. Sometimes I do make mistakes, and I even admit it. You may have just noticed in the video that I just broke off a connecting rod bolt, snapped it clean in two. So what I had originally done was I pulled out my phone and I looked up the torque spec for the rod bolts. The number I came up with was 75 foot-pounds. 75 sure sounded high to me in my head, but I said, oh, the internet could never be wrong. I couldn't be making a mistake. So I set the torque wrench to 75 and went at it. And well, this is what you end up with when you do that. Then today I went in and I said, okay, I must have, that I must have found a page that was incorrect. So let me go find that page and prove that I'm not wrong, but the internet's wrong. Lo and behold, I found the same page. What I ended up using was the torque spec for the connecting rod bolt on a 426 Hemi. Further down on the same page, it did have LA motors as 45 foot-pounds. So, what do you end up with? You end up with one bolt broken off, and look at this guy here. It's kind of all humped out there and then skinny, so it looks almost like a Coke bottle. And if you look at a normal one, it should look like that. So the question is, when you've broken one of these, what do you do? My gut reaction is I've got a whole other set of these pistons and rods. I'll just pull a couple of bolts out of one of those. But then I go on the internet and everybody's like, oh, you should put in new ones. Okay, well, let me see how much are new ones. ARPs are about $70 for a set. I really don't want to spend $70 for a set of bolts for a motor that is really stock. It This is not going to be turning even probably 300 horsepower. Good old factory OEM bolts are going to be enough. Then I read... Oh, well, you, if you change the bolts, you've got to recondition the rods. Well, the problem with that is then you're taking weight off of this connecting rod. If you take weight off this connecting rod, you need to make all of the other ones match again. That sounds like a whole lot of work because I've uh, screwed up and broken a single bolt. So why would you need to recondition them? Well, the thinking is that this rod cap here maybe shifts one direction or the other, and so then it's not perfectly round, and you're going to bind on the crank and cause problems. And here's my thinking for this, right? This is not a perfect fit. It's obviously loose enough I can move it. There is at least probably a couple of thousands play here. I figure I just pop a couple out of the old one and put it back in as a sanity check. Once I put the cap in and I tighten it down, if the geometry here has changed and this is offset, then it's going to bind on the crankshaft and I won't be able to turn it. If it's assembled properly, I should be able to grab onto the crankshaft and rotate it, no problem. So that is, in my book, the sanity check. If this thing turns on the crank smoothly, once it's reassembled, we're just going to keep putting it together. Hopefully. We won't have 
in a few months when I start this motor up another opportunity to say, oh, I guess I was wrong again. Right, now we torque these to spec, which is 45 foot-pounds. I tighten one side and then the other to try to be fairly equal about it. And there we go. Use the ratchet to disassemble. Take a look at the bearing clearance. So here's that plastic gauge here. And if we take a look, looks like it's about one and a half thousandths clearance. Torque this. Now cylinder one is done. Now I'm going to move on to cylinder number two. that. Make sure we're on the inches scale. And it looks like right at two thousandths of an inch. And then retort. After I put one in, I like to take the crank, just make sure everything still turns nice and easy. If anything's binding, it usually means that you have a cap on reversed. So make sure it's not bound. That's all good. And that's all there is to it. Just gotta finish these other six. There we go. Pistons, rings, and rods are installed. Next up is going to be the camshaft. Thanks for watching.